So here's to you, <laughs> Jai Ram Ji. Thank you, uh, Gita Reddy Ji. Vedilu Garu Vinilu Manohar Rao Garu Ji, Mr. Chidambaram, Uttam Reddy Garu and all my friends in the Telangana Pradesh Congress Committee. Uh, it's indeed an honor and privilege uh, to be here on this occasion. Uh, it is the occasion of the presentation of the historic budget of July 2021 by Dr. Manmohan Singh. Uh, but Mr. Narsim Rao became the Prime Minister the previous month. He became the Prime Minister on the 21st of July, uh, June 1991 under the most difficult of circumstances. And uh, I had the good fortune and privilege uh, of working with him before he became Prime Minister, a few weeks before he became Prime Minister, when he called me and uh, Pranam Mukherjee ji and told us, I remember very clearly he told uh, Mr. Mukherjee, uh, Pranam, I have been minister in almost all ministries, but I've never been finance minister. And I look to you uh, to help me out and to guide me uh, in the weeks ahead. This was three weeks before he became Prime Minister. After he became Prime Minister, Mr. Chidambaram has already mentioned, he took very unpopular decisions. Uh, first of all, the two-step devaluation of the Indian rupee. Uh, he was not entirely convinced, but he had extraordinary trust uh, in Dr. Manmohan Singh. And between Dr. Manmohan Singh and Dr. Rangarajan, who was then the Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of India, very reluctantly, Mr. Narsimarao agreed. He agreed to the first devaluation, but actually it was a two-step devaluation. And he was very reluctant for the second step of the devaluation. And it required Dr. Manmohan Singh and Dr. Rangarajan uh, to be able to persuade uh, Mr. Narsimarao to allow the two-step devaluation to take place. Then Mr. Chidambaram came up with his bold trade policy, uh, which was a complete departure from the past. And even here, Mr. Narsimra was not entirely convinced what we were doing, but he had trust again in Dr. Manmohan Singh and Mr. Chidambaram, uh, and he allowed the trade policy reforms to continue. Then on the 15th of July, 1991, uh, he spoke in Parliament and he was attacked. Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee attacked him. Mr. Chandrasekhar attacked him. A lot of leaders, Somnath Chatterjee attacked him. And Mr. Nasim Rao listened to all of them and he said, what am I doing? I am faced in an extraordinary situation and all I am doing is Vinasha Kale Samut Panne Ardham Tyajati Panditaha Not many people understood what he meant Vinasha Kale Samut Panne Ardham Tyajati Panditaha That when you are faced with destruction the wise man gives up half so that he can retain the half. He floored the Lok Sabha with that description of what he was doing. And a few days later, again, he was asked, again, he was criticized. And he said, we are embarking on a long journey. Economic liberalization and reforms is a Mahaprasthana. Mahaprasthana. That is the word he used for, he didn't use words like reforms, liberalization, globalization, and all that. That is what Dr. Manmohan Singh and Mr. Chidambaram were using. But Mr. Narsimara was using the word Mahaprasthana. Not many people knew that Mahaprasthana came from Mahaprasthanika Parva which is the 17th chapter of the Mahabharata. The point I wish to make is that the language and the idiom with which Mr. Narsimra was communicating 
this revolution in economic policy was an idiom steeped in Indian culture, steeped in Indian civilization. Vinashakale samutpanne ardham tyajati panditaha. And Mahaprasthana, to me, symbolized the erudition of Mr. Narsimharao. Then came the budget of July 24th. Mr. Chidambaram has already reminded us that the 24th of July was historic for the budget, which unveiled the economic policy of the Narsimharao government. It was also historic because of the new industrial policy. And there were many people in the Congress party who were not entirely convinced that this was the route. Mr. Narsimharao himself listened to all of the critics very, very patiently. He, I knew that in his heart of hearts, he wanted to get it done. But at the same time, he was not entirely convinced that he could take people along. But when it came to the crunch, he put his foot down and made sure that the new industrial policy became a reality. And he sold it to his cabinet colleagues on the basis of one line. And that line was, our policy is change with continuity. There are many things in our policy which we are continuing, but which we are not changing at all. But there are things that we have to change. Change with continuity became the Narsimha Rao mantra. The middle way, the middle path, which he elaborated in his Davos speech early next year in 92, became the philosophy of the Narsimha Rao government. The Narsimha Rao government never abandoned its commitment to the public sector. The Narsimha Rao government never abandoned a very prudent and cautious approach to the opening up of the financial sector. The Narsimha Rao government never abandoned its commitment to employment generation and rural development programs. People forget that Mr. Narsimha Rao was rural development minister along with being prime minister. He was his own rural development minister for much of his tenure. And as rural development minister, he introduced very many new programs in order to give the human face to economic reforms and liberalization that Dr. Manmohan Singh talked about. There have been other achievements of Mr. Narsimha Rao, which Dr. Manmohan Singh has enumerated in the field of science and technology, in the field of foreign policy. But he is, of course, best remembered for the economic transformation through the new industrial policy and through the new trade policy that he masterminded and allowed his cabinet colleagues to push through. I think that trust that he enjoyed with Dr. Manmohan Singh. In fact, his greatest contribution to India, in my view, was to select Dr. Manmohan Singh as finance minister. Because Dr. Manmohan Singh made economic reforms and liberalization acceptable across the widest political spectrum. Neither Mr. Narsimha nor Dr. Manmohan Singh had reputation of being market friendly. If anything, they represented the left of center politics and left of center economics. But the fact that they were putting together this economic reforms package meant that it was acceptable to a large cross section of Indian society. I remember at one point of time, Mr. Narsimha Rao was very, very downbeat with the criticisms of the budget and the criticisms of economic reforms. And I showed him an interview in Frontline magazine, which K. N. Raj, the great Indian economist, uh, had given. And somebody had asked Dr. Raj about the budget. And Dr. Raj said, well, I have my problems with the budget, 
But since Manmohan Singh has presented it, I take it at its face value and I will accept whatever my friend Manmohan says. So that was the credibility of the finance minister and the credibility of the finance minister could not have been made possible without the full trust and support of his prime minister. I have described this earlier in a book I wrote of that period as a Jugal Bandi. This was a Ravi Shankar Allah Rakha type of a Jugal Bandi. A Jugal Bandi in which the prime minister provided the political leadership and the finance minister provided the technocratic design uh, of what came to be known as economic reforms and liberalization. So I am delighted and I'm privileged to have been part of this ceremony that, that will launch a year long celebrations. And I think this is the time for us to remind the younger generation, uh, a whole new generation that has been born after 1991 of why 1991 happened, what was the background to 1991 and the scale of the transformation. It is not just 1991 did not just result in economic transformation. It resulted in a political transformation. It resulted in states becoming more powerful. It resulted in a social transformation. Remember that after 1991, it was the Narsimha government that implemented the Mandal Commission reform, the Mandal Commission recommendations as well. So I think 1991 has a significance that goes much beyond economic. And I hope that the year long celebrations that are being launched today will bring together the entire canvas of change that was unleashed when Mr. Narasimha Rao became Prime Minister in June of 1991. I salute his memory. I recall his contributions. And I am proud to have been part of those contributions for a brief period, but at a crucial period, at a time when it was seen that we were doing things out of compulsion. But very soon, Mr. Narsimha Rao, who started off being a prisoner of compulsion, became a votary out of conviction. And he, it was he who began to champion in forum after forum the cause of economic reforms and liberalization that was part of the 1991 budget. So thank you, Uttam Reddy Garu. Thank you, Gita Reddy Garu, for having me this afternoon. Thank you, Jairam Ji. It was again a wonderful message that you have given us about P.V. Narsimha Raghavaj's role. And of course, we do remember him and we do remember that we want his legacy to be carried on by the younger generation. A lot of young leaders are here. And so we hope that your speech has also enlightened them quite a bit about what P.V. Narsimha Raghavaj did in his time.